Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today we are going to be digging a little deeper into the animation engine behind After Effects and the stuff I'm going to be teaching you might be considered quite advanced as well. So don't be like confused or surprised if you don't get it straight away. But uh, I think if we're just concentrating on an animation, these kind of tools are kind of useful. So what I have here is uh, I just have a solid like we had yesterday, but I've made it the size of the composition. And I have this football here. Now one thing which we haven't covered yet is if you have this little plus here, uh, millions of colors plus straight, this means that it has alpha. Now what that means is if I double click, you'll see that this has transparency around the football, which is really useful uh, because it means when I drop it here on top of our background, you see the areas around the football are already see-through or transparent. Uh, and it means I don't have to mask out like the shape of the ball, so that's really useful. But I know we haven't imported anything with alpha yet, so um, kind of useful to know, I guess. So, um, what am I going to teach you today? Well, the first thing, like we, we, we got into what these things do, uh, making keyframes yesterday. And you might have seen yesterday that um, when you start keyframing position, you get this kind of path here. And I wanted to explain how this works. So um, at the moment, as you can see, we have the ball moving along the path. But the great thing about this is if you come to um, the pen tool and uh, you come to the convert vertex, you can change these to like Bezier paths and basically change the whole path of your ball, but without actually changing the keyframes. So now we've got the ball going in like an arc which is a lot more useful than uh, having to like individually manage that with keyframes because that would be a lot trickier to do. Um, so just know that if you're animating keyframes that this kind of stuff is, as long as you could have the layer selected and you have position keyframes, you can actually change the path around. Now, uh, I showed you yesterday about like the, the speed. So as you can see, as I make this smaller, the dots in between these dots are the keyframes, basically the key um, parts in between all of our keyframes that it's kind of traveling along. And um, these, if we have a look, if we right click and go to um, rove across time, what this will do is, uh, and I'll show you that again in a minute, what this means is it will select all your keyframes and you can grab the last one. And as you can see here, it's automatically scaling everything in between in terms of like my timeline. So if I move it closer, we're getting that fast animation. And what this is doing is it's keeping the um, speed across all of your path consistent. And that is so, so useful. So um, even if I move it here and make this really slow, you're gonna find that when I play it, the ball moves at the same speed. Why this might be a problem is if I undo this. Um, so let's say here we have like three keyframes as you can see here, the spacing between these keyframes and these is different. So if I press spacebar in place, the ball is gonna move at a different speed between these points and we want it to be smooth all the way around. So the way you do that is you just select them all, right click, go to keyframe, uh, to rove across time. And, uh, and there you go. Now the ball will move at the same speed across all of those keyframes and that is um, a pretty cool trick to know. And if you wanna undo it, just right click, uh, select them all and then just control click on um, any of these. Oh, actually that doesn't work. So just go to rove across time and undo it. Um, I thought that did work, but there you go. And uh, you learn something new every day. So that's rove across uh, thing. Now there's something else which is super confusing. I know when I got into After Effects, um, let's say I want this ball to uh, speed and then like kind of like slow down. Um, now I've changed this in my preferences, but you might find this incredibly annoying if um, if you uh, haven't used this program too much. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing our path and um, so we have the ball coming in here and then let me just, I'm gonna press, if you press J and K, you can jump between your keyframes, which is really useful. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is basically make the ball slow down towards the end of the path. Now if I do if I do that um, like so, so this is doing exactly what I want it, um, but that's because I have my keyframe interpolation set to linear. If I right click this and you go to interpolation, 
and change this to Bezier, which I believe is the one by default, your keyframes will look the same. And this isn't doing it, but basically what happens is sometimes your ball, you might find your ball does something funny in terms of like it will bounce back and forth between a keyframe. And I highly recommend in your interpolation changing spatial to linear. And this will just mean that it will always move in a straight line at a uh, straight speed in between these keyframes because sometimes it will overshoot and kind of bounce. Uh, it's not doing it here and I, I'm not quite sure why, but um, you might find that to be a problem. So just always check that your um, keyframe interpolation is set to linear here in terms of spatial and that will save you a ton of headaches, believe me. Okay, so um, what else are we going to teach today? So I'm going to delete this kind of position keyframe and we're going to do what we did yesterday. I'm going to show you how to use expressions. Now, expressions can be scary for people that don't know what expressions are. They're basically like ways in which you um, tell the animation. You basically put in some maths and uh, After Effects will then use those maths to uh, generate animation or like basically all the stuff you don't want to keyframe. So I'm probably bubbling and sounding really confusing right now. So what I'm going to do is just show you because that's the best way to do this. So I'm going to do what I did yesterday. So I'm going to make two keyframes, one going up and then we're going to want to do one coming down. So um, I'm going to copy and paste that keyframe and we're going to want this to happen over the space of one second. So I'm going to come here, hit N to uh, close my preview area down here. Then I'm going to hold Alt to um, make this exactly one second long. So if I just play my um, work area here, so I've got my shortcut to play the work area. As you can see now, the ball is bouncing. Now we, we decided yesterday that that kind of animation is boring. So I'm going to right click and change this to easy ease. Okay, so now we go, we have something a bit more interesting. And if we come into our node graph here, um, we're going to have the the same problem we did yesterday, which is that we need to um, just make this kind of uh, bounce a bit more. So uh, we're going to ease these out and there we go. Okay, now so that's that's kind of cool. But what the problem is, this is happening over a second. Now, what if I want it to happen over 10 seconds, right? And it stops. So that's really annoying. Now, obviously, I could try and select copy and paste keyframes and do it this way and let's see if that works yeah that works so that's that's one that's one way to do it for sure like that's an option but there is an easier way to do this and that's using an expression now expressions we'll get onto properly in another lesson but i just want to show you that there's a menu which is kind of hidden away which you guys should be aware of so if you hold alt and hit um the stopwatch here, and you can see it says it on the uh, little uh, I don't know, pop up. It says here, alt click, add or remove expression. So you go to the property that you want to add the expression to. So in this case, um, position, and I'm going to alt click on the little stopwatch here. It's going to open like this hidden menu, which uh, says expression, position. So, and then it will have this little box highlighted. This is all really confusing if you don't know JavaScript. However, there is a useful little menu here, which has loads of pre-built expressions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to property and I'm going to move this up because I know I'm working on a smaller screen now and hopefully this will uh, show up. Okay, we're going to go to uh, property and we're going to go to loop out type cycle. Okay. And as you can see, it's going to paste in some handy little um, some text here, loop out type cycle number of keyframe zero. Now you don't need to know what that means. All you need to know is it's been applied. So um, if you click out of it, now let us try run preview this. And oh my goodness, it's with the help of only three keyframes, we are now uh, just playing this and it will loop forever. And that's what we've done. So what it's doing is it's grabbing these three keyframes and just looping the animation out forever. So how useful is that? And this is really useful, like say you want something to flash on and off and like you've gone to the opacity. So you go to opacity and you keyframe like one and then you keyframe it down and then you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to copy and paste these keyframes forever. 
to make something like flicker on and off. So you want that to happen, but for a long ass time, then uh, you would just add the expression to that. So um, I've shown you the cycle expression, but there is another one as well. And we can actually do this animation with only two keyframes. So we are really showing off. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. If you don't know how to do that, go to layer, select your layer, go to edit, and then duplicate, which should be here. There it is, control D. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this last keyframe. So now this is, uh, so now obviously we still have our expression ex uh, applied, which is why these numbers are red. So if we turn this down. So now what happens is because it's looping just these two keyframes, it's jumping straight back. So it's doing this one, and then we remember this keyframe is the top of the jump, and then straight away it's just gonna go back to the start. So uh, it's a different type of animation, but this is not what we want. However, if we change this loop out type from cycle to, and you just need to write this down because it's kind of hard to remember, but ping pong, and just click out. Now, um, Look what we're doing. It's literally just going back and forth. So it's going nah, 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 back and forth between these two keyframes. So this ball is literally, and now see, I, see, I want to like change the speed of this animation. Only thing I need to do is play with these two points. I want to slow it down. I'll just do that. You know, if I want to like make this bounce slower in, I'll do that, but I'm going to keep it really sharp. Maybe that's too slow. So I'm just going to move this in. Maybe that's still too slow, so I'm gonna move that. Now it's bouncing really frantically. If we turn the motion blur on for this as well while we're doing it. There we go, we've got a nice bit of motion blur. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of, kind of useful. Um, let's show you one last one now. Uh, I haven't done this one in a while, but I think it should work. Um, let me see if I can remember how this goes. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to change this to offset. Hit OK. Now I'm going to copy this keyframe in again, but the difference is I'm going to move the ball over. So and then on the apex of the jump, I'm going to move it like halfway up. So I kind of like doing this thing. And like I showed you earlier, you can kind of like get your little learn tool. And so we've got this going on. The difference is that now, every time it repeats the animation, is it's just gonna offset it. So it's gonna go down and it's gonna cycle it, but it's just gonna keep going and going and going at the same speed as it was before. So that is actually pretty cool. And if you select all your keyframes and make sure you're lined up with one of them, uh, you can actually drag your whole animation across. And there you go, Look, right, we've got this little ball bouncing across the screen. And again, because because of the way this is done, um, I'm just gonna hit a loop area here. Uh, now that we've got this sorted, we can come into our graph and you know we can change the way this ball works. So uh, does it bounce like this? Does it, does it slow down? Does it speed up? Um, the great thing about the new After Effects is it will continue to preview even while you're messing around with this graph. So that's kind of neat. Obviously I'm making <laughs> this animation look worse and worse, but that's a simple introduction to animation and expressions and um, a few tools that are hidden away to kind of loop your keyframes to make things easier. And that is quite an advanced trick, but I think you guys can handle it. So uh, I will see you next time for another lesson on something in After Effects.